From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Folks, this is uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This afternoon, I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Graves' disease. And I have been talking about hypothyroidism. And Graves disease is uh, the most common cause of uh, hypothyroidism. So let us see the most important things. So we have thyroid gland producing the thyroid hormone in excessive amounts in Graves disease. Basically it affects women between 20 years and 40 years. And it's like eight times more common in women than men. Basically, it is a secretion, hypersecretion of thyroid hormone because of the stimulation of TSH receptor by immunoglobulin J. So here is the TSH receptor and it is stimulated by thyroid hormone. Like uh, the, you see in the normal thyroid, we have TSH stimulating the production of our thyroid hormone. But here, an antibody, TSH or antibody, an antibody that is directed against the TSH receptor site is acting on the thyroid follicular epithelial membrane and causing the excessive production of uh, thyroid hormone. So basically we see thyrotoxicosis in Graves disease and there are three things unique to Graves disease. They are ophthalmopathy, dermopathy, osteopathy. So remember those three things folks. Ophthalmopathy, dermopathy, osteopathy. These are the three things and ophthalmopathy is the most frequently seen physical finding in Graves disease. And then comes dermopathy and osteopathy. What happens basically is Glycosaminoglycans, they actually accumulate under the skin, especially in the anterior tibia. That's why we see the pre-tibial myxedema in these patients. And also in osteopathy, there is this accumulation and the osteoma formation. As a result, ophthalmopathy, dermopathy, and osteopathy happens in these patients. Now, ophthalmopathy, we need to talk about it, especially the lid retraction ophthalmoplegia and uh, they are uh, very very common the, you see the lid retraction the eye lids will retract it it could be unilateral or bilateral and uh, most commonly they involve the lower and uh, anterior upper and lower lids you will also see exophthalmos basically that uh, protrusion of the eyeballs and uh, many times it is asymmetric and uh, usually bilateral and what happens is uh, there is that uh, accumulation of the contents in the orbital uh, cavity and as a result the ocular muscles they become bulky and the fat accumulation takes place and as a result the, the protrusion of the eyeballs happens and then we have the ophthalmoplegia and uh, even sometimes that compression of the globe by the orbital contents may actually produce the elevation of the intraocular pressure and there can be even retinal damage and choroidal damage and even optic neuropathy. Optic neuropathy happens in uh, severe forms of Graves' disease. So you see folks that ophthalmopathy we see in these patients can have wide-ranging effects right from simple lid retraction to the even optic nerve and even corneal ulcers. Many times as these patients eye protrusion happens, the cornea is exposed and the cornea eventually develop ulcers. And in severe exophthalmos, that's what you see, a corneal ulceration. Now let me talk a few minutes about uh, laboratory. Yes. The diagnosis of uh, Graves' disease, you can actually 
get it from the physical exam and you see the ophthalma pathe. But there is also the increase in free T4 and T3 and decrease in TSH. And when you don't see it, you need to evaluate for TSI, that is thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. And it is specific for Graves' disease. So thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, you measure it and if it is elevated, it is you are seeing Graves' disease. And even that does not help you, the gold standard is a radionuclide scan. You see, the, you see, Graves' disease basically is a diffuse goiter. So it takes up these things. Now let us talk about uh, the treatment. There are three things in the treatment. Number one, the control of hyperadrenergic symptoms. Number two, the, the short-term restoration of euthyroid state. And number three, the long-term management. So you need to control the adrenergic uh, excess. How do you do that? You do that with beta blockers, propranolol and retinolol. And uh, you need to give them, even before you start the actual treatment of hyperthyroidism, and propranolol has the advantage of inhibiting peripheral conversion of T4 to T3, and uh, it helps you to bring back to the normal state. The second thing is restoration of euthyroid states. And you use methimazole and carbamazole for this purpose. Okay. The first thing is control of uh, hyperadrenergic states with propanolol or retinolol. Second stage is uh, restoration of euthyroid stage that is achieved by methimazole or carbamazole or propyl thioerosol. Now, methimazole you can give them as a once daily dose. Propyl thyroidase, you can give them in pregnancy and breastfeeding, but it can cause hepatitis in some patients, even though it is very, very rare. And propyl thyroidase, it uh, blocks the conversion of T4 to T3. And traditionally, it is used for thyrotoxicosis. So propyl thyroidase is a good medication in pregnancy and breastfeeding. That's a very, very important, folks. And both propyl thyroidase and methimazole can cause a granulocytosis. So when a patient comes with a sore throat, fever, and he's on propyl thyroidase or methimazole, they are asking you to think about a granulocytosis. If a patient comes with fever, sore throat, and he's on methimazole or propyl thyroidase, you should check their WBC whether they have developed that serious side effects of propyl thyroidase, which is a granulocytosis. And methimazole can also cause jaundice, angioneurotic edema, hepatostelos or toxins in the vasculitis. Now the third step is long-term therapy. It is based on the age of the patient, severity, duration of hyperthyroidism, size of the gland, and uh, potential for future pregnancy. Now, methimazole is chosen for long-term therapy, particularly in adolescents and young patients with uh, small glands and less severe disease. The other thing is radioactive iodine ablation. Radioactive iodine ablation is a treatment of choice for 21 years old uh, and old. And it's a very, very effective treatment, but you cannot give that in pregnancy. Radioactive iodine treatment is contraindicated in pregnancy and is not advised in women who are planning to become pregnant in the next six months. That's a very, very, very important point, folks. So remember that radioactive iodine is contraindicated in pregnancy. Now, what should you do in such patients? Go for subthyroidectomy, sub, sub, uh, uh, subtotal thyroidectomy. That helps. You are cutting up the excess thyroid tissue. Now, what are the complications of uh, Graves' disease? The most important thing is thyroid storm. It's basically thyrotoxicosis, and you will see all the symptoms of thyrotoxicosis, cardiac problems like atrial fibrillation and tachycardia, and it's a medical emergency, folks. When you see thyroid storm, you should immediately treat them with propanolol, propyl thyroidacil, and hydrocortisone. Those are the three medications in the treatment of thyroid storm. 
propolol, propyl thiouracil, and hydrocortisone. So remember those things first. So let me summarize and I will finish. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder where the antibody is directed against TSH receptor resulting in the excessive secretion of thyroid hormone resulting in thyrotoxicosis. There are three things unique beside all the symptoms caused by thyrotoxicosis. There are three things unique to Graves' disease. Ophthalmopathy, dermopathy, osteopathy. Those three things are unique. And when you diagnose it, you diagnose it based on ophthalmopathy in the physical exam and decrease the TSH, increase the T3 and T4. And if this is not enough, you go for thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, TSI elevation. If that is not enough, you go for radionuclide scan. That's the gold standard for the diagnosis. In the treatment, there are three things. Control of uh, hyperadrenergic status, you do that with uh, propanolol or etanolol. Then the short-term treatment to bring the patient back to euthyroid state, you do that using methimazole or propyl thyroxyl. And uh, then finally, long-term treatment, you do that with uh, medications or radioactive iodine or subtotal thyroidectomy. So those are the important things. When you talk about complications, you need to think about thyroid storm. And thyroid storm is a medical emergency, and uh, you treat it with propylenol, propyl thyroxyl, and hydrocortisone. Those are the most important things. So that's, uh, those things help you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.